Good morning. Good morning. You're all very welcome to our harvest service. And it's good to see so many of you here today. And of course, it's a special day because as well as celebrating the harvest, we also have a christening, a welcoming of a new baby, a new life into All Souls Church. And that's always a very special occasion. And uh, the other thing that I was asked to mention to you that we now have a facility down in the crypt where we have, you can watch the service on a screen and you can hear the service as well. And if there's any mums or dads who um, want to take their little ones at any stage, you're not compelled by the way, but at any stage, if you want to go down there, that's uh, your entitlement. So I just thought I would bring that to your attention. And we're going to put lovely couches in there as well next week. I understand we've bought some really Swedish design? No? <laughs> Italian, probably. Yeah. So we're gonna, it's going to be really nice. I put a coffee machine. Yeah, why not? A band. Maybe hold a cabaret there. Yeah. Anyway, once again, you're all very, very welcome. Let us prepare ourselves for our hour of worship, prayer, meditation, and song. We are people of faith, faith one in the other, faith in the ability of our communities, of our churches to make a difference faith in our common humanity that at this harvest time we can sing in harmony so that the threads of the great web resonates with joyful life faith in a loving compassionate and inclusive god working through all of us who can only work through us to make this world a better place for all humanity. Amen. And now may we sing together our first hymn, and it's, it should come up on the, yeah. Come ye thankful people, come.
morning. Uh, this morning I have chosen, it's a very light-hearted poem. Uh, a teacher wrote it, intending it to be read at the school's harvest uh, assembly. Uh, it was basically it was to t teach the children the difference between having and needing, sharing, thinking of others, and being thankful what you have yourself. One Friday night in Nando's, I saw a peculiar thing. Mr. Have and Mrs. Have were eating chicken wings. They sat just by the window and licked their greasy lips. Then Mr. Have said, now my dear, shall we have more chips? Oh yes, more chips, his wife replied, and how about more chicken? So Mr. Have approached the till and ordered from the kitchen. He sat down at the table and Mrs. Have then said, this chicken is delicious, dear but shall we have more bread? Mr. Have went back again to order bread and butter, but when the chef saw Mr. Have, he began to splutter. More food, he said, you've cleaned us out. You've eaten everything. You've eaten every chicken leg and every chicken wing. Why don't you go to Pizza Hut? I'm sure they'll fit you in. My kitchen's bare apart from bones and bits of chicken skin. Mr. Have was really cross. He wanted more and more. He fetched his wife, and arm in arm, they flounced out through the door. Come on, my dear, said Mr. Have. Let's go and order pizza. Mrs. Have was thrilled to bits. I'll have a margarita. But as they walked across the square, they saw a lonely sight. Mr. Need and Mrs. Need were sitting side by side. Where Mrs. Have was large and round, Mrs. Need was skinny. Where Mr. Have was big and tall, Mr. Need was mini. Mr. Need and Mrs. Need looked over from their seat. Good evening, both, said Mr. Have. We are on our way to eat. Mr. Need and Mrs. Need looked hungry, that's for certain. Said Mr. Need to Mr. Have, haven't you just eaten? We saw you there in Nando's with chicken wings galore and now you're heading to the hut to fill yourself some more. Mr. Need and Mrs. Need had not had any dinner. They just sat upon the bench, on the bench, slowly getting thinner. This made Mr. Have feel sad. His wife began to blubber. Why don't you come and eat with us? Please let us buy your supper. Mr. Need and Mrs. Need did not need asking twice. They jumped up straight away and said, how oh, very, very nice. Mr. Have and Mr. Need walked quickly to the diner. Said Mr. Have to Mrs. Need, nothing could be finer. They went inside together and enjoyed a smashing meal. The Haves paid for everything as that had been the deal. And every Friday night since then, the Needs and Haves go out and those who have, and those who have pay the bill so needs don't go without. It's nice to share. <laughs> Thank you very much, Charles. Let us pray. Loving God, Make your ways known upon earth. Help us to love our planet. Let your saving power work through all peoples. Renew your churches, your mosques, your synagogues, your temples in holiness, in love, in inclusive love. Help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of all nations. Bless them with wisdom and hope as they meet in Glasgow, that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy be forgotten. Now the hope of the poor be taken away. 
make us instruments of your peace and let your love be over all of the earth. And now may we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may we sing together our second hymn, Let Us With Gladsome Mind. Uh, for the second reading, I've selected a few lines from Mark 4. If someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, the seed would sprout and grow. The earth produces of itself first the blade and then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. When the grain is ripe, the harvest has come.
Now, during service, because of we are still guided by regulations with regard to COVID, we don't do a collection. However, there is a box at the back of the church, so if you're feeling generous, and I know you like the music, but if you like the sermon as well, you <laughs> maybe that's not such a good idea. Um, uh, you can always leave something in the box. The other thing is, well, we have lots of lovely refreshments at the end of the service, uh, coffee, tea, and lots of lovely homemade buns. So please stay and, and have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, and have a nice chat. Harvest is a time for thanksgiving, in particular for the food that is bountiful and arrives in our stores or at least should arrive in our stores. With some difficulty at times, there is shortages at the moment. We're told there's a shortage of truck drivers, uh, and that leads to empty shelves left in our stores. Now, I have um, an interesting take on this, and I have a feeling most of you probably won't agree with me. I would be surprised. I'd love to think that somebody might. I'm with the truck drivers. Because uh, before I became a minister, for 20 years I was a trade union official. So I think the truck drivers should start getting paid better money in order to deliver to the stores. Yeah? Thank you, Monica. Yeah. Absolutely. What people don't realize is nobody would work under the conditions that many of them work. Really, they wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't even like to describe how they're supposed to sleep in the vans and how they're supposed are in the trucks and find comfort in the evening with toilet facilities, all that. So I don't blame them. And if there's empty shelves, so be it. When the truck drivers are paid a proper wage, we'll get people doing proper apprentices, apprenticeships to be truck drivers and not bringing in people to work at half the pay that normally people should be working at. So that's my take at harvest time on why you don't have everything you would like in your store. So getting relationships right is what I'm talking about. And in many ways that in involves in including us in how we're paid, the food of our choice, all that is important but to get the relationships right. But also it can be that harvest of divine love. And amongst the bounty we arrive, we receive the gift of grace. Today we're welcoming a little baby into our community. And that in itself is a very joyful thing at harvest time. We give thanks for the bounty we receive. And we also give thanks for new life. And as Christians, we seek the gift of grace, which can be the greatest sustenance, especially for the human soul. I suppose it would be worth reminding ourselves what we understand the nature or virtue of grace. When we sing and talk about grace, we may not always comprehend its qualities. I imagine it to be a spontaneous gift from God to those who seek or desire grace. Grace is generous, free, and totally unexpected, and sometimes undeserved. Grace takes the form of a divine favor, love, clemency, and a share in the divine life of God. If God had to have an attribute, that attribute would be grace. I suppose the obvious sign of grace is how one behaves in their relationships with others. And I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon, service, the, ser the sermon. I mentioned at the beginning the relationship between employee, employer, and government. 
and how we deal with those relationships, even in the personal as well as in the collective. And do we bring grace to those relationships? I don't think so. I mean, you've only to look at who controls the remote in any family home and see with what grace we share the remote. Particularly, I mean, I think I notice in most homes now, people have at least two televisions to deal with control of the remote. And that's not a bad idea. That's working, working through relationships. Recently, at the Reverend Dr. Ambassu spoke about relationships and making relationships work as being more important than being right in a relationship. You may recall that Reverend Dr. Sar Yambasu is the first black president of the Irish Methodist Church. He is a native of Sierra Leone and he was delivering the address at the recent Armagh service on reflection on hope, marking the centenary of Northern Ireland. Sadly, at that service, Her Majesty the Queen was unable to attend due to doctor's advice. And the Queen was represented by the Lord Lieutenant of County Armagh, Lord Caledon. However, Dr. Yambasu called us to put relationships ahead of being right. That's a hard thing to comprehend. It's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to act on. Being right seems to be at the heart of all our general discourse. Or at least it seems to be important to gainsay the other person. Within our churches, we have that attitude. A church believes itself to be right. And therefore, it sees other people as being wrong. It doesn't put working relationships ahead of being right. I got an email the other day saying to me, um, Reverend Hudson, uh, I understand you regard homosexuality as suitable and concurrent with attending church services. How do you equate that with scripture? And I wrote back, by the guy, the guy's name was Jude. I don't know if it was Saint Jude. I doubt if it was Saint Jude. So I wrote back, Jude, I obviously just read a different Bible than you do. Maybe I'll send you over mine. Or I said, maybe I read my Bible with different eyes than you have. So there was somebody who believes, you know, that we all have to agree with that person to somehow be correct. Instead of worrying about how you put relationships with each other, how you understand the only thing that matters in the Bible, the only thing that matters, love and loving your neighbor as yourself. The rest is storytelling. I'm sure I would have been burnt at the stake for saying that a couple of centuries ago. Although, it's on the way back, I believe, that type of thing. It is difficult to put relationships first, and yet we have to work on it. It's difficult in our own personal relationships to put the other person first. Some will say the danger in appearing to concede ground, to appease, is to appear weak. It's always better to be steadfast. It's always better to be self-righteous. And I can understand the difficulties with that, that people are afraid if they give way, that they're conceding some sort of sense of themselves to others. Like everybody that listened to the words of Dr. Yambasu, I'm equally struggling with his call to put relationships before being right. He said, 
he spoke to people from the heart. And he said he spoke as a person who comes from a community that were bought, sold, and used for profit, whose continent was torn apart without any reference to or consultation with its inhabitants and its owners, whose color was seen as sufficient excuse to ignore the equal humanity with others. He liked to think, Dr. Yambasu, that he brought some knowledge from those experiences to the debate that we were having. Dr. Yambasu also spoke about grace, and that's why I mentioned grace at the beginning of this sermon, which he said alone can set people free. Grace can set you free. The outworking of grace is forgiveness, and forgiveness is releasing. Releasing others as well as oneself from corroding. And may, maybe at harvest time, when we give thanks for God's blessings and for all those who provide us with the food that we do see and eat and purchase every day, that we will be guided by how we put relationships first and with the grace that Dr. Yambasu spoke about. In Jeremiah 22, 3, it says, we read that the Lord said the following, do what is just and right, rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed, do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless or the, mother, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, we might factor those words into our deliberations on grace and relationships. Amen.
This is a mother's prayer. Love, I have counted each day waiting. I have whispered new names each night. I have held this child forever. I have dreamed dreams beyond my imagining that come to life in the tiny fingers that wind around my thumb. Whatever this child is and will become, may he know the wisdom of your temple days. May he be lifted, may he lift the wounded with your healing way. May his heart be humble should he stray. When your mother let you go, did she walk the dusty roads forever in her heart, following you with love? And now may we sing together our final hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter.
May the light around us guide our footsteps and hold us fast to the best and most righteous that we seek. May the darkness around us nurture our dreams and give us rest so that we may give ourselves to the work of our world. Let us seek to remember the wholeness of our lives, the weaving of light and shadow in this great and astonishing life in which we move. Amen. God bless you all. Stay safe.